Okay. Wait, where's mm -hmm. your book report? Why can't I think of one? All right, so here we go. So uh, what we're talking about today is basically applying uh, the formulas, the graphs, all of our knowledge that we've talked about frequency, well, a little bit of frequency, uh, rotation, angular displacement, angular velocity, uh, all that good stuff. So, uh, this is the first time we have a graph, and this is the graph of the angular velocity of the graph of a wheel. And then this says how many wheel, how many revolutions does the wheel make in the first four seconds? Um, Maybe probably a better question would be, what is this wheel doing? Is it rotating clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Why do you, why do you all say that? Positive omega, so it's, it's traveling like this, okay? What else can you say about this thing? Starts off at uh, zero rotations. Now they don't tell us where it starts off. It could start off here or over here or down. You know, it could start off to say it starts off here. Somebody describe to me uh, what I should do with my arm to mimic the motion here during the first two seconds. Go faster. Go faster. Yeah, in a positive direction. Okay. Yeah. So I'm doing this, right? Faster and faster. And then from two seconds onward, what should I do with my arms? Stay the constant. Stay the constant. Okay. So. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Okay, so then, and then I'm going to keep going. Three Mississippi, four Mississippi, just around that same. Okay. All right. Well, at least no one will ever see you. Then you acting like this. All right. So now the question then is, uh, how many revolutions does the wheel make in the first four seconds? Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, let's see. How many revolutions? How many times does it spin around? Um, what is this asking for? What's the, what, what, what concept, what term have we been discussing with this? How many revolutions? Like how far did it rotate? Displacement. It's what, um, yeah, it's looking for uh, angular displacement. which is delta theta. How am I going to find angular displacement from an angular velocity graph? The area. It's the area. And we'll uh, also pay attention to those units here. So the area under the curve that says during the first four seconds. Great. So it's really just the area of this trapezoid. Uh, I've got units of one, units of one, so that's great. So this is one half plus one half, so that's one. Two, three, four, five, six. The area under that curve, uh, I should say under those two lines, but you can say it's a curve. The area equals six. What are the units going to be? Revolutions per second. That's the y axis times seconds. So six revolutions. Okay. I think it is. That's the end of 7-1. Now we'll look at 7-2. So you can see we have some formulas there. And then, what else do they have to say? Uh, I think you all read in the book, talks about the rigid model, such as uh, we're treating this object as just sort of one thing, although we all know that inside it's actually lots of uh, molecules that are attached with bonds, and when you, when one of them moves, then it exerts a force on the next one, which exerts a force on the next one, so they all kind of uh, act as one unit. Uh, if you're ever dealing with stuff on a lot small, smaller level, you're going to go into some advanced physics or whatever, then you can you know, deal with that. But for us, right now, intro course, that's what we're doing. Uh, just as a review over some of the type of motions that we've talked about, we've talked about translational, that's our sort of one-dimensional kinematic, uh, rotational, 
uh, it is possible to have a combination. You could have something moving in a line as well as spinning, okay? So it could be, you know, even moving in projectile motion and spinning. And uh, we're not gonna deal with that too much. Uh, this was an interesting picture. If you had like a, uh, a wheel on an axle, you could pick one point on the wheel as it's rotating and um, as they chose in this point, and then say, okay, from that point down here to here, uh, what's that angle of rotation? Something that we didn't talk about, I think the last couple days, but it, it is worth repeating, or worth mentioning the first time, that let's say you've got a point right here, uh, and so that would be traveling around, so to speak, in a circle like that. And you've got another point over here, this, this one happens to be on the edge, traveling around in a circle like that, okay? And this point right here has omega of, I don't know, five radians per second. That means this guy is cutting, is having an angular displacement or angular velocity of five radians per second. Anybody know what the omega would be for this point out here? It would be larger. Okay, larger. What's that? 25. 25. I don't know how you got the exact number, but okay. Equal. Equal is correct. Wait, isn't it by squared? What nope. is the square? Oh, okay. This what I'm talking about is angular velocity. Oh, okay. How many angles it cuts, okay, so to speak, it or it sweeps is the technical is the way a lot of people say. <coughs> uh, in a given time. Alright? We're saying that, you know, in one second, this point right here is going to cover five radians. Okay, which is end up actually being right here. This point up here is also going to cover five radians. Think of it like this, what if I said it was one revolution per second? This point right here would go one revolution per second. This point up here, also one revolution per second. Okay. So omega, the angular velocity is the same for all points on the wheel. It's true because it's angular velocity, not just velocity. Right. Now, what well, you're talking about velocity, that is different. But outside would be faster. In that case, outside is faster. If you watch the demonstration, didn't they have like the two little bears oh, yeah. going around? <laughs> yeah, okay. mm -hmm. And the inside bear wasn't going as fast as the outside bear. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you've ever run a race, you kind of know this is also true. If you are going to be making that same angular velocity as the other person and you're on the outside, you're going to have to go faster just to keep up if that makes sense, okay? If you're both going to sweep around the same arc at the same, you know, the, the same 180 degrees or whatever, if you're maybe if you're running around in a circle, maybe if you are at a skating rink, okay? And you're on the inside, your friends on the outside, they're gonna have to go a lot faster, does that make sense? Um, have y'all ever heard of the term geosynchronous satellite or geostationary satellite? Okay, uh, there are some satellites, let's say here's you on the Earth. There are some satellites that they put up in orbit. There's a satellite. That as the Earth travels around one rotation in 24 hours, the satellite also travels around one complete rotation around the Earth in 24 hours. Now what that means is at any given time, that satellite is directly above you, always. You'd really be going around like this, but you know, whatever. Y'all get the idea? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're going around, the satellite's going around. And so uh, what might be the use or the purpose of having a satellite over top of the same spot on the earth all the time. Because the satellite is for something on the other earth. Okay, so if the satellite is for something, like such as, what would, what would be the purpose of having a satellite up there in space above us? Internet. Okay, the internet, or maybe like your, I mean like your direct TV, yeah. or you know, like your satellite television, stuff like that. Well, can you make sure that we're recording? I'm not sure if we yes, are. Yes, we are. We are? Okay, thank you. All right, 
It's not going to do you any good if you're paying for satellite television and the satellite is doing this thing. You see what I'm saying? It's going to pass over you and you're going to get like 10 minutes of television and then you're going to have to wait for about an hour and a half and then you'll get another 10 minutes of television. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Those big communication satellites like that, that that are broadcasting, you know, television or radio or um, maybe they're communicating with ships. <coughs> at sea or with airplanes if you fly on some of the airplanes nowadays they are a lot of them have uh, internet they're talking to satellites okay there's another reason why you might want to have a satellite and that is if you're able to actually get three satellites okay and you get the signal from this one and you get the signal from this one and you get the signal from this one and you kind of know how the, the time difference and the time delay between the two of those, the three of them, then you are going to be able to figure out exactly where you are on the earth, okay? Based on, you got the signal a little bit later from this one, a little bit sooner from this one, a little bit sooner from this, and you're able to do some calculations. You can figure out exactly where you are. And that is the global positioning system. CPS, that's how it started, okay? Was with satellites, I want to say a couple dozen satellites that they put up there, and one thing that they had to do, they had to make those satellites go really, really, really fast because they have to be going at least as fast as the Earth just if they were hovering right over top of it. But when we kick them farther out here, just like this point here on the edge is kicked out farther, it's going to have to go really, really fast if it's going to keep up with that inner piece. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. If they're going to stay synchronized. All right. And so uh, that's why when they do launches, if it's to a geostationary orbit like that, then they have to get those rockets going really, really, really fast. It uses a lot more fuel. Okay. Now, uh, so uh, I remember when I was, I guess, your age, maybe a little bit younger, um, my uncle, he was a hunter, and he had a, GP, a handheld GPS device that cost, it cost him a couple hundred bucks, okay? So he could go out and walk in the woods, and he'd be it, it, listen to satellites, and I took that thing, and I would, like, actually run back and forth on my grandma's driveway, you know, all the way down, all the way back to see if we could figure out how far it was and how, how accurate it was, and it took a second or two of a delay. And the thing is, is that uh, those satellites, they're still up there. They're still sending the signal down. Um, but uh, just because you, maybe your phone or your car is using GPS doesn't necessarily mean it's always listening to the satellites. It's not necessarily talking to the satellites. You would need a satellite phone for that. All you have to do is listen, which is one of the really cool things, that these are just sending the signals down so that anybody can figure out exactly where they are, okay? But in case you're wondering, Nowadays, we also have a bunch of other things uh, around, like they're called cell towers, and there are, there's a lot more of them, and they're a lot closer. And so you can also uh, use a global positioning based on where you are in relationship to those towers, and your cell phone can figure that out. And that's normally, nowadays, the way that it does that. <coughs> From some of the stuff that I've read, if you're, even if, if you are on um, uh, a server like a router or a Wi-Fi, and it and Google Maps knows, oh, that server or that is at Keene High School. It's gonna say, oh, you're at Keene High School, and so it, it can actually uh, location-based services. If you if you're uh, an Apple person, you can turn on location-based services and, and some of the Android and stuff as well, and it will actually it'll figure out it'll listen to GPS if it has to. It'll, uh, to the satellites or to listen to the cell phone towers normally, or it'll even use uh, information about the, your local router. So, um, anybody ever used uh, Street View for like driving around and doing stuff? You know how they took, how they did that Street View? Yeah. In a car that was constantly taking pictures and stuff like that, and it was using, G and it was getting GPS, it was figuring out where it was from the GPS coordinates, and that's, and it was feeding that in, and then also taking the pictures. But what they don't tell you is that it was doing a whole lot more as well. 
it was listening. Okay, you ever walk around with your cell phone? You like look at wi available Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. so, okay, <coughs> and you're your house or your friend's house, and all of a sudden you're looking to see all your neighbors' different, you know, Wi-Fi. Wi you know, and uh, if you ever want to have a message to your neighbor, you can always like rename your router some really obnoxious thing like, "Hey, turn your music down." <coughs> if they ever look to see the router, then they would see a little message, you know. Imagine you've got a car and you're Google with all your different stuff and you can just go drive around on all the different streets and you can look and see, oh, this server is at this location. Oh, this server is next to this house. Oh, this server, you see what I'm saying? And so you can start to get a map. <coughs> I don't know for a fact that they did that, but I, I think they did. Because then they can know where all the servers are. And then they're like, oh, you're connected to this server. Okay, then you're probably at this address. So it's kind of something to think about. I know they had a lot more information on it than just the GPS stuff. Um, yeah, you know. Oh, that's there. So uh, Kevin, read that one to us about Rashid. Rashid and Sophia are riding a merry-go-round that is spinning steadily. Sophia is twice as far from the axis as Rashid. Sophia's angular velocity is length that of Rashid. And we just talked about that. What's that? What? Anybody want to say what that's going to be? The same. The same. That's right. Oh. And then the next question. This says uh, Sophia's speed is what? Is her speed going to be more or less? More. More. Specifically, it says she, if she's twice as far from the center, then her speed is going to be twice as fast. The velocity is proportional to the radius and omega. This is actually, I think, exactly the same question. Mm -hmm. Two coins are on a turntable. Coin B is twice as far from the axis as coin A. Which one is true? The angular velocity of A is twice B. A, is that, is that true or false? False. False. What about B? The <coughs> angular velocity of A equals that of B. True. true. That's true. And that's our answer. Okay. Uh, we've already talked about angular acceleration. That's the change in angular velocity over time. Um, you can kind of see, here's some examples. We've talked about positive rotation, positive acceleration, you know. So let's talk about this one. You've got the fan blowing here. <clears throat> Somebody tell me, is omega positive or negative in this it's case? It's negative. Okay. All right, omega is negative. So that's going to wipe out those two and this one. And we're told that it's slowing down. So what does that tell us about the angular acceleration? It's positive. It's positive. Remember, they have to be opposite signs if it's slowing down. So, uh, you know, the angular velocity might look something like. It's always going to a stop. So, omega is negative, alpha is positive. What about this one? It's speeding up. Well, omega is the same. It's negative. If it's speeding up, alpha must be negative. also negative. So yeah, there you go, answer B. They're both negative. Same sign, speeding up. Now it can speed up clockwise or counterclockwise. So counterclockwise is positive. That's correct. Just like in pre calc. So we do the first quadrant, that's positive. First quadrant first, or that's positive. If you're ever unsure which direction is counterclockwise and which way direction is clockwise, feel free to utilize my clock up there to remind you the direction of clockwise. All right, Nancy, read this one to us, please. Yeah, this seems to be like going pretty counterclockwise. It takes two point five seconds to speed up to eight thousand four hundred RPM. What is the drill that angular acceleration? Okay. Um, that's important because of something we'll learn about next week, which is torque, can, which can tell us how much, uh, which we need to figure out how much power is going to be required. Okay, so 2.5 seconds, so T or delta T, if you want to think of it like that, 2.5 seconds. Uh, 
2400 RPM. What's that represent? What quantity? Mm -hmm. Okay, revolutions per minute, and what yeah. did you say? Which velocity, linear or angular? angular. It's going to be angular because it's. Okay. Yep. So omega is 2400 revolutions or rotations per one minute. We don't like it. We don't like the, the units, revolutions per minute, we want radians per second. So get rid of revolutions. One revolution is two pi, two pi, radians. Two pi radians, which is something you have to have memorized. Time, <coughs> we get rid of minutes, turn that into seconds. Someone's calculator, let me know what's this? You said 251s? 251.3 radians per second. Okay, what do they want us to find? Um, Angular acceleration, alpha. Anybody have any formulas that might help us out here? What's that? Okay. Alpha equals delta omega over delta t. So that means the final omega minus the initial over the time, which that's two point five. What's the initial velocity or initial angular velocity? <coughs> Yeah, they don't really say it, but we, it's a reasonable assumption to assume that it's starting off at zero. So I will put that up here. Hidden information, initial angular acceleration is zero radians per second. So 251.3 radians per second minus zero over 2.5 seconds. Someone with a calculator? Yep, 100.5 radians per second per second, or if you want to, radians per second squared. Okay, and I think that's the last problem, isn't it? What's the next page look like for you? Four? Perfect. Great. Um, as a rare treat, I'll give you the rest of this class to work on some homework. I also will be, I can pull up any problem that you like. We can work a similar problem from 7-1 or 7-2. Just let me know which problem number. Oh, no, I have Tiger Delta. That, okay. Brooke, can you hit the South Park one? Well, actually, no, leave it because somebody may want to watch this with our show. They may want to watch our class again. Anybody have any requests? This is homework 7.1. I've got all eight problems here. I'll only answer some of them, but. all requests. What is that? What does it say? Item? Item 7. But I know for everyone else it's different. No, it can't be. They'll all be the same. No, they're all different. Oh, that one? No. Oh. There's a fair deal of rotation and angle.
It actually randomizes the order too. Yeah. It's a standard view of randomizer. Man, that makes it really hard to work together, doesn't it? It yeah. does. Yeah. Are y'all able to overcome those difficulties? Yeah, we don't work together. Sure, but I'm busy going to you all. I'm not going to say this. That's great. I did exactly what the book told me to do, then I still got it wrong. That's the one? Yes. All right, so read out to me there, Kevin. First, we'll rotate the angular velocity of 0 0.0139 radians per second at t equals 0 minutes. So we're trying to set it at the very top. Of the okay, so let's go ahead and break that down real quick. Angular velocity for that omega equals. Now, you don't have the same exact numbers, do you? I do. I have three nine. Is it okay if we just do it like this? Yes. Yeah. No. Do three nine. No. <laughs> okay. We need to draw a picture. Yes. <laughs> There's stuff. Thanks. Okay. okay. Got it. Now the next part there, Kevin. Um, what is Seth's angular position at t equals four minutes measured counterclockwise from the top? Give your answer at an angle in degrees between zero and two feet. Okay, so if he's at the same spot, he'll be at zero, right? Now this is uh, counterclockwise from the top, so that would mean that if he happens to be right here, then that would then they're expecting 90 degrees. Does that make sense? And if he's right down here, obviously, then they would be expecting 180 degrees. Okay. Um, uh, four minutes. Okay. That's your delta t. Now we normally don't deal with minutes. Seconds, yeah. So times sixty, so which okay. Which way is this rotating? Okay. So uh, we know how fast he's traveling, you know, and we know the time. They're just wanting us to figure out where is he gonna end up. So, uh, where he ends up, we, what we can think about is, you know, what it, what is the uh, what is the concept that's going to tell you, you know, you start here and you end it here, and we said like that's ninety degrees. What concept is that that we've been talking about? Um, angular displacement. Angular displacement. Does that make sense? How much he's displaced angularly. Okay? So this is wanting us to find angular displacement. Now I'm going to use this as a teaching opportunity because I'm a teacher. And I'm going to say it could happen that it's nice and he ends up just like right down here or something like that. Or he ends up here. But if he's been on a Ferris wheel, I mean, it's about, it depends on how big it is. For four minutes, you might go all the way around, and then you know you're around again, you know, and then you're maybe you're going to stop right here. You see what I'm saying? So, it, let's think about all this in terms of degrees, okay? It may we may come up with an answer like that's like 600 degrees. Does that make sense? And then we might we have, we have to convert it back to, okay, where is that going to be relational? I mean. We totally can 
Well, maybe. No, I don't think we can deal with this with degrees because all of our formulas always work in radians. But, but then it becomes like when you give the application of radians, you're going to convert that to degrees. That's what we're going to have to do for our final step. Final step, we're going to have to do this. All of our formulas that we've been dealing with, omega, omega naught, blah, 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 yeah, that's all, that's all radians. I actually, would it work for degrees? I've never done it before. It might, because it's just a, it's just a multiplier. And it might work for degrees. But I want you to be, able to be experienced in radians, so let's just keep going with this. Okay, so they're looking for angular displacement. That's delta theta. Now we need to look for a formula that's going to relate omega, delta t, and delta theta. Open to all suggestions anyone else is playing along. Okay, yeah. The original formula is omega equals delta theta over delta t. You can solve this for delta theta is omega times Delta so delta theta is 0.038 radians per second times 240 seconds. Okay, the seconds will cancel, notice, and you have radians. <laughs> now, what's that? I think you're forgetting a uh, it's point zero on radians. So here you get nine point one two radians. I'll tell you what, let's just convert this to degrees right now. Okay? So nine point one two radians. I'm gonna convert that to uh, degrees, Kev. No need, no need to do it in subtraction. Let's just let's convert this all to degrees. Let's get that 800 degrees or 600 degrees. You see what I'm saying? Let's, let's just get it all. And then we'll subtract 360 from it until we're happy with the answer. So remember how to convert from radians to degrees. You want to get rid of the radians, so put radians down here. I want degrees up there. And then I can choose what my multiplier is going to be. Nancy? Remember? I mean, 180 over. Five hundred. Keep going, Kim. Five hundred thirty-six point one six two eight eight one. Two eight point two eight. Okay. Degrees. Okay. So he did go all the way around once, right? Yeah. So when you just subtract three sixty from it, okay, and then you get one hundred seventy-six point two eight. Yeah, it's quite. Okay. That sound good? Is that number between 0 and 360? Yeah. I'm mm assuming -hmm. you got it done. Okay. Great. All right. Take it all requests. We still have 10 minutes left. What did we learn from this, Kevin? That 
At the end. Yeah. And then figure, you know, do that. Was this helpful to kind of like the omega? Now you've got that formula. The problem is, I understand it now, but like I don't think. Okay, can you get it exactly? Right. No, I understand. And and the thing is, is that part of part of physics is the deciphering <laughs> of how to how to you know like I said the rest of your life. Here's a new formula. Now take everything now that we're giving you a new problem and put it in terms of that new formula. Yeah. Uh, does somebody else have another problem they'd like us to work together? Vijay. How does it start out? Okay, next one. Uh, runs around a circular 70 meter track five and a half times, ending up directly opposite first starting point in three seconds. This one you want to talk about? Okay, all right. Anybody else want me to one move? You okay, all right, sure. Um, let's draw a picture. 70 meter diameter track. I'm gonna have her start right here. I don't mess with diameters. Alright, Kevin Proctor, what else? She ended up directly opposite. Okay. As long as she just yeah. went 180 degrees, she's done quite a lot. Okay? What are they asking us to find? So you want to say uh, you divide both sides by r. Yeah. So velocity over. Oh wait, no, no. Angular. 
this is angular velocity. This is linear velocity, her straight line velocity. Like if she was doing that, if she was running at the same rate, but rather than in her circle, running around, around, if she was going like straight line, like how much? It's okay, Linda. I don't think Okay, we do have the radius. Do we have her straight line velocity? No. We know we don't. Sorry. Uh, do we, okay, maybe. Do we know her initial <laughs> angular velocity? So I'll Are you looking for what? Can we can we assume that it's zero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a reasonable assumption that she's that she's starting at zero. Yes. Okay. So that's great. That's gone. Do we know her angular acceleration? Mm -hmm. probably do that. Now that's not going to be angular acceleration. That's just going to be Straight. how long it took her to go one location. That would be the period. So that's not angular acceleration. But I do kind of like where you're going with that. Um, in fact, that the formula that we need is not on the, that AC physics formula chart. Okay? It's, it's the basic definition of omega. It's omega is change in theta over change in t. The, the angular displacement divided by um, the time, okay? And her angular displacement, and I'm just saving you some time because you, you wouldn't get there is, you know, in one one time around, that was 2 pi, right? Then again, another 2 pi, so 4 pi. Third time, 6 pi. Third time around, 8 pi. Another time around, 10 pi. And then a half of a turn. So not the 11.5, all the way around us, that next time would be 12 pi, so it's happening between 10 and 12, so it's 11 pi. So her delta theta is 11 pi, 11 pi radians. <coughs> you could also get that if you did the 5.5 revolutions, uh, and she did, you know, one revolution is two pi radians, you're gonna get 11 pi radians. So that's your delta theta. Delta T is three seconds. So you just take that 11 pi and divide it by the three. Yeah, because okay, so, so that's your delta theta. And I'm plugging that in here and you're Yep. Uh, so yeah, that this formula actually was the same formula as the one that we had the last one. So it, this is a very important formula. It's the definition of angular velocity. Uh, similar one is the definition of angular acceleration. So, all right, uh, we're talking about torque and other things next week. See you then.